Hi guys, as you can tell, it is another gorgeous day here in the end times in the Finger Lakes region of New York outside of Ithaca where on Thursday, June the 13th at 3 in the afternoon, it is 54 degrees. 54 degrees on uh, June 13th on another rainy, yuck, gray, depressing day here in the end times. My final day in the Finger Lakes. My final day. And uh, what a fitting final day. A high of 54 degrees alternating between drizzle and downpour on another just soggy yuck depressing day asking myself what in the fuck am I doing up here and I am heading to the Catskill mountains tomorrow I'm gonna head it about two hours east of here and try my luck in the Catskills so the little dog and I were taking one last one last ride around the Finger Lakes looking for our little bivouac for the end times and uh, I don't know I had an interesting offer uh, dangled in front of me yesterday uh, about buying the piece of ground across the street from our tribes member Basil uh, good alert tribes member Basil and Karen so who knows guys you might end up be careful what you wish for you might end up with Hambone and Sancho as your neighbor speaking of uh, Basil and Karen I want to send out a big thank you for Basil and Karen's very kind gift to my unofficial GoFundMe campaign where I'm trying to raise the $300 that I just sent off to Garfield, Texas to clean up that mess uh, of that latest tree down in my yard. Good God Almighty. Uh, Gee, spending 300 more dollars picking up another tree down in Garfield. At least it ain't the cottonwood tree. So if anybody has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to ever send one penny to support what I do here on YouTube, I greatly appreciate it. So with that pleasant task out of the way, who else do I want to uh, recognize before I... Oh, I do want, just to put in a quick plug for a new Doomer channel I have found. This is Maggie May's channel. Like the Rod Stewart song, you know, Maggie and then M-A-E. So just uh, look for the Maggie May channel and uh, check out what Doomer Chick Maggie is up to in the Doomosphere. I think you will have some fun over there. So anyway, thank you Basil and Maggie for uh, doing what y'all do. I'm, gonna... I'm just riding around aimlessly here in the Finger Lakes looking at for sale signs. So anyway, I just want to uh, I might have had this rant sometimes in the last eight years, but it has kind of come back into uh, focus here just the past couple of days and I'm just gonna rant for a few minutes since I've got nothing else to do while I drive around in the rain looking at for sale signs to talk about this uh, saying we hear a lot of in the Doomosphere, this bullshit saying called Nature Bats Last. 
nature batch last I think it was uh, anaerobic is using this tired old saying that's uh, been co-opted here you know by the ass licking toadies in, in the uh, down here in the doomosphere uh, and, and guys I, I guess whoever came up with this whoever the clueless fucking moron was who came up with this saying nature bats last to uh, to suggest I, I know what they're trying to say particularly in the uh, in the near-term human extinction mu movement that by nature bats last that humans are going to go extinct and nature's going to kind of go right on about our business. There's only one problem with this uh, saying nature bats last. The, the, if you have the most preliminary, I mean the most preliminary uh, understanding of the rules of baseball, and I assure you my understanding of the rules of baseball are completely uh, preliminary you know that whoever bats last does not necessarily win the baseball game there is no guarantee that the last batter is the winner so I, I mean I know what you guys are trying to say but all anyone who uses this nature bats last so anyway I, I so literally what the saying where it comes from uh, okay uh, we're gonna do like a real-world example okay uh, so pretend like uh, you're at a baseball game in New York okay so if you live in New York and you're going to a baseball game the home team is New York all right they uh, bat last the home team bats last so New York is the last one to bat okay are 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 you following me so uh, let's say here we are we're coming into the ninth inning and, and the visiting team I don't know that you know I, uh, we're just gonna call, uh, you know, LA. All right, just uh, so LA. So LA is is the visiting team coming into New York. We come in to the ninth inning. There's nine innings in a baseball game. All right, here, here's two ways uh, that the last batter does not win the game. Actually, two out of three ways it can go, the last batter does not win. All right, and, and, and the most common way in what you would think about it is, uh, so it's the bottom of the ninth. The bottom of the ninth. And the visitor team, LA, is up, call it three to two. So the home team, New York, is down one run. Is it, okay, this is, this is real tough stuff I'm talking about. They're down one run. The home team, New York, has one more chance. They are the last batter. It is their last chance to score two runs and win the game. They can store one run and take it in extra innings, but they need to score two runs to win the game. They're down, coming into the bottom of the ninth, and everyone strikes out, so they don't send anyone across home base. So the final score of the game is three to two. The person batting last just lost the game. Okay, the flip side. We come into the ninth inning. We come into the top of the ninth inning. And so now New York has three. The home team is ahead by one. New York is three, and the in LA is two. Okay, 
so LA needs to get two runs in the top of the ninth inning to win the game. Are you following me? So New York gets up to bat and every and they don't send anybody around the plate. They are the last batter, but the home team never even needs to to bat because they've already won the game. Uh, so the fact is so so there are two examples right there where the home team can be the uh, last batter and not win the game or the visiting team. So two out of three ways. Uh, the only way that the last person to bat can win the game, the, the only way that that would ever happen, the last person uh, to, to win the game is the one out of three times when the home team is down in the bottom of the ninth and they do come back in the bottom of the ninth to win the game. At that point, voila, at, at that point, uh, the last batter wins. So more times than not, the last batter does not win. So it's a bunch of shit that when nature bats last, the last batter is not guaranteed to win. So let's put it on a more metaphorical level. Obviously, we're speaking metaphorically, and what they're talking about is the first instance. So, all right. So obviously, Mother Nature is the home team. So the Mother, so mother Nature is the home team, and it is the ninth inning uh, on the planet. Uh, so obviously the humans are uh, the visitors, the invaders I would call them. So we are in the ninth inning, but uh, there's a two out of three chance that uh, the last one to bat is, is not going to win. And if it's the home team, uh, so then somebody said, okay, then what, what were a couple of so someone said, okay, Hamon, it's that it's not so much that nature bats last. Uh, that what it is is that nature has a perfect batting average. That nature bats 1,000, as they would say. That nature has a perfect batting average. Whoever thinks that nature has a, that, that nature uh, is batting 1,000 against humanity obviously has never consulted any of the uh, 200 species per day that humans are eradicating off the face of the planet. Uh, obviously they were not consulted when figuring out Mother Nature's batting average. Anybody who thinks that Mother Nature's batting average against uh, against humans is batting it has a perfect batting average obviously has not been reading uh, the mainstream media news or the United Nations latest dire report about the state of the planet meaning humanity taking down the planet so uh, what nature is batting is cleanup and, and this is also uh, these, the, these batting uh, analogies come showing up in the Doomosphere. So the way I look at it is nature is batting cleanup. And at this point, this is where I am, am, am going to defend my old buddy Book Hermit, the climate denying, uh, climate change denying Book Hermit. And I, I agree 100% with Book Hermit when he talks about, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't agree with Book Hermit that, that climate change is not going to be a problem. I wish I, I had called up this. I read this essay by Royce Scranton a couple of days ago 
over on Collapse Chronicles for Roy uh, really, really, uh, he, he, he verbalized this so well. What Roy was talking about, uh, you know, kind of echoing what, what Book Hermit is saying is that by the time climate change does come in, it, you know, to take down the planet, that humans just acting like humans, uh, this humanity acting like humanity will have already taken down the planet with no help at all from climate change, just from, you know, from habitat destruction to uh, overfishing to all of the other things, all the other ways that humans are winning the game over nature, that with no help at all from climate change. I've, I've had this rant many times, with no help at all from climate change, uh, there, uh, th that, that humans will do just fine eradicating every one of our fellow earthlings off the face of the planet. Uh, you know, I use the example of those noble savages. Uh, by the time Honky got here to the New World, by the time Honky got to uh, Turtle Island, uh, the, those noble savages, those invaders, the visiting team uh, called the Native Americans, I love that term, Native American, those invaders from Asia had already uh, gutted uh, Turtle Island. You know, they had obliterated off the face of the planet not just 15 species of uh, large mammal, but 15 genera of, uh, of, of large mammal, of megafauna, uh, of megafauna. Uh, that with no help from Honky, the, the Native Americans, just what they had to work with, had already uh, completely uh, wrecked the place. So when Honky got here, uh, it, just, it just finished off what the Native America, the little bit the Native Americans with their level of technology could not do. Honky got here and, and managed to do in 200 years what it took the Native Americans 10,000 years to do. But they were just batting cleanup. So Honky coming into North America, the, the visiting team uh, coming in uh, to the home team, clearly, uh, you, you know, they, uh, I think the Native, the Native Americans would agree that Honky won, uh, but Honky coming in to uh, what, what is now the United States and batting cleanup is exactly the, a, a metaphor for what climate change is going to do when it gets here. It will get here just as sure as, uh, just as, sure as Honky found their way uh, to the Western Hemisphere. Uh, climate change is going to find its way here and is going to kick some ass, but by the time it gets here, as, as Book Hermit drills into our head, and I agree with 100%, the planet will already have been destroyed. And so uh, that's all, all climate change is going to do is, is, uh, is, you know, bat clean up and, and finish off the job that uh, humans uh, have found all these other ways. But of course, no one uh, wants to talk about this. But anyway, I just uh, 
been meaning to get this Nature Bats Last Unadulterated Horse Shed. Every time I've heard that comment, uh, I, I, I just kind of bristled. You know, just one more reason. The whole ass licking toady crowd. Anywho, I see my battery light is flashing and I have got to figure out where in the hell I am. And uh, figure out my last night. I cannot fucking believe that I'm back on 79. That's really funny that I am back on Route 79 where I started 20 minutes ago.